Uh, <coughs> good morning. Uh, sorry. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I'm just waking up. Uh, welcome to our press conference today. Um, well, the clip you saw was an extract from uh, a movie shot by uh, the person sitting beside me here, Thomas Ash. I'll introduce him properly in a second. Um, what uh, I also want to do is introduce uh, the people who are beside him. Uh, that's Mr. Denny's uh, and Mr. Lewis Christian. Uh, they are both former detainees of the Ushiku Center, which is, of course, uh, the movie that we are discussing today. Uh, the Ushiku Center is Japan's largest detainee center, uh, and uh, the two people at the table uh, have both spent time in there, and they are on provisional release. Well, as we probably, uh, many of you know, Japan's diet has scrapped controversial reforms uh, to the uh, immigration law, that, if passed, would have allowed authorities to forcibly deport people who failed to qualify for asylum after two attempts. The fact that that law was scrapped uh, is significant and may have something to do with the recent death of a Sri Lankan woman uh, who was in the care of detention authorities in Nagoya uh, and uh, who passed away after what appears to have been a very trying and difficult period. Uh, Ushiku in Ibaraki Prefecture, as I said, is home to Japan's largest immigration detention center. Uh, Thomas Ash has made a documentary that takes viewers deep into the psychological and physical environment of foreigners who are held there. He secretly recorded interviews of detainees, giving people a voice who rarely are heard in the media or anywhere else. Many of these people are refugees seeking asylum. Uh, and as I'm sure we will discuss today, a spate of deaths in detention centers over the years has been blamed on conditions inside those centers and on lengthy detainee detentions, I should say, uh, uh, sometimes up to a year or more of people who are uh, outstanding their visas or have other problems. Um, so, uh, Ian, uh, sorry, Thomas, of course, is well known to many of you. He has been here before. He is a uh, well-known documentary maker. He's based in Tokyo. I believe he's been here for nearly two decades. Uh, he is going to talk first uh, for uh, about 10 minutes, and then we're going to hear from the other two speakers. Can I just remind you, if you haven't, to uh, turn off your uh, Keitai phones in case they go when we're talking. Thank you. I would like to begin by thanking you all uh, for being in attendance today, and I would especially like to thank the participants in the film that have joined me here, uh, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Dennis, for their courageousness in sharing their stories. Uh, the FCCJ is, is streaming this on the YouTube channel uh, in English. We have simultaneous Japanese translations. For those of you that would like to watch this from home in Japanese, um, on our uh, Twitter feed, uh, at Ushiku Film, we are live streaming the, the Japanese uh, simultaneous translation. So please go to our our Twitter page. Sorry. Yes, and on the FCC FCC channel, it's only in English. That's correct. Um, I would first like to begin by explaining uh, how I came about to make this film. Uh, I began visiting the immigration facility in Ushku as a volunteer and I was deeply affected by hearing the stories of some of the people that were detained. It was only then that I began to think about how to use the power of film to bring this story to the attention of the Japanese public and to the world. Since filming and photography is prohibited inside of the center, I began to think about how to accomplish this technically, as well as how to confirm the needed consent. When I first met the people in detention, I asked each of them, as it is seen in the trailer, for their permission to share their stories. Nine of them consented to having their stories shared. They are the participants in this film. However, and I will state clearly, when I filmed them, they did not know at the time that they were being filmed. I hid the camera and intentionally did not share with them at the time how or when I was filming. I did this for the following reasons. There was no way to tell if our meetings were being listened to or secretly observed. 
there was no way to tell whether the immigration officials were watching our meetings through the one-sided mirror in the meeting room door. And I did not want to be stopped from gathering evidence about what was happening in the detention center. I bear the full and sole responsibility for the filming of these people inside of the meeting rooms of the detention facility. Under no circumstances should the participants in the film be held accountable or punished for what I have done. My motivation was not to make a film, but rather as a witness to human rights violations, I felt morally compelled to document evidence in the form of filming the detainees' testimonies to document their truth. There were three detainees who at the time I believed were facing a grave threat to their lives. With the recent death of Wishma Sandamal Ratnayake, who had been de detained for seven months at the immigration center in Nagoya, and the deaths of 16 others over the past 20 years, demonstrates why so many supporters are concerned about the health and well-being of people suffering in indefinite detention. During the course of the pandemic, eight of the nine participants of the film were granted provisional release and, ex and released from the detention facility. I was able to meet them outside, explain to them what I had filmed, and confirm whether they consented to sharing their stories through the documentary. The eight participants reviewed the footage that had been recorded inside, and all of them consented to having their footage released. Several of the participants were also interviewed while they were out on provisional release. One of the participants who to date has not been released from detention participates in the film solely through phone calls. This participant has given his verbal consent to the use of his name and his voice in the film. I would now like to focus the attention on the courageousness of the people who are speaking out against the immigration system and sharing their truth. They are taking a massive risk in speaking out. While my hope is that sharing their voices can be part of bringing change to the system and prevent other people from facing similar abuses, there is a serious risk of retaliation by the immigration authorities. The climate of fear that the immigration authorities has created is so severe that it even causes some supporters who passionately fight for change to be so afraid of retaliation that they engage in self-censorship. This may take the form of a reluctance to speak out against the status quo and even in actively discouraging victims of the immigration authorities from speaking their truth. It is what Frederick Schaar once described as the chilling effect. And it is this effect the Immigration Services Agency and its parent structure, the Ministry of Justice's policies have imposed on free expression. An example of this chilling effect has recently manifested itself in relation to this documentary. After releasing the trailer last week, it came to my attention that the supporter of one of the participants in the documentary is claiming that he had not been given the opportunity to give his consent to participate in it. The supporter in question alleges that the participant had requested an opportunity for his lawyer to review the footage before giving his consent, and that without being allowed to do so, the trailer was suddenly released. I will reiterate that all nine participants who are in the documentary have given their consent on multiple occasions. Eight of them, including the participant in question, were given the opportunity to review their footage and did so. The participants were asked multiple times for their permission and were informed as recently as the day before the trailer was released that it was going to be released. The participants have been informed of the events and developments regarding the film, such as this press conference and the upcoming preview and world premiere, which I will speak about in a moment. I would like it to be known that two of the nine participants did request for their lawyer to review the footage, to which I, of course, obliged. 
If any other participant would have requested to have their footage reviewed by their lawyer, I would have prepared the footage for that to happen. On the two occasions that participants requested for their lawyer to review the footage, all I asked was that the participants in question call their lawyer to inform them that I would be calling and the reason. No lawyer would speak to me without their client's consent. When victims of human rights abuses wish to speak out, our role is, as supporters is to support them, not to discourage or suppress their right to speak their truth. I have received multiple threatening emails, texts, phone calls, and a voice message from this supporter. If this is the level of threat that the supporter is leveling against me as the person who recorded these testimonies, I am afraid to imagine the amount of fear he has inflicted into the participant in question in an effort to discourage him from speaking out. The amount of time and effort being spent on actively attempting to discourage these victims from speaking out only confirms how successful the authorities have been at creating this climate of fear in Japan. To anyone actively working to stop these victims from raising their voices, stop using your energy and time to preserve the status quo. Any supporter trying to silence the victims who wish to speak out is simply doing the work of the immigration authorities. This is all I will say about this topic because it is regret regrettably taking time away from the issue of human rights violations being faced by the participants. Let us all direct our time and effort toward the participants who are suffering under the current immigration regime. While the fact that this film comprises hidden camera footage may seem shocking, the footage I took simply documents the real-time conversations with detainees as they speak about their mistreatment by immigration officials and endure indefinite long-term detention. I did not film anything beyond the meeting room at the immigration center. Yes, I broke the rule regarding the prohibition of filming and recording in the meeting rooms, but I think we must first ask ourselves, why does this rule exist? The detention center is not a prison, and the detainees have not committed any crimes. If they want to speak and have their stories shared, why are they not allowed to do so? If there had been a way to document what was happening inside of the detention center without breaking the rules, I would have done so. But there was no other way. The most horrifying footage that audience will, audiences will witness in this film is not that which was filmed by me, but in fact, that which was filmed by the immigration authorities themselves. Lawsuits being brought against immigration have resulted in these deeply disturbing images being obtained by a lawyer who then shared them with me. These images audience will see are infinitely more frightful than the footage I recorded of people giving their oral testimony. Before I hand the floor over to Mr. Dennis and Mr. Lewis Christian, I would like to remind our Japanese listeners that on our Twitter account, Ushiku Film, you can hear the Japanese translation of what we are uh, talking about today. I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Lewis and Mr. Dennis, who have so bravely and courageously come here today to share with them their truth. Once they have spoken, I will briefly share about the upcoming screenings of the documentary. Thank you. Thank you. So just to uh, remind everybody, the interpreters today are Mary Joyce and Shane Harris. They're over in the interpreting booth there, and they're uh, interpreting uh, simultaneously. Um, I think Dennis, Mr. Dennis is going to go first. Is that right? And Mr. Dennis is going to speak in Japanese. あの、皆さん、ここまで来てくれてありがとうございます。感謝します。あの、私はトルコのクルド人デニスです。2007年で日本に来て、2011年で結婚して、で、最後捕まった時に3年半ぐらい入管に入れられちゃって、そこでは精
できるまでは言ったと思いますですけれども。トマスさん、私たちの面会に来てるとき、私はちょっと映像は見たですけれども、中でいる人たちのたった一人も、ここは素晴らしいところ、言われらない、最低なところ、ルールもない、いじめばっかり、病院に行かない、いいご飯はない。あー10、10、10、10だから、ヌフカンのいいことは一つもない。いいところになったら私たちは外出られないです。とそこでは入れます。で、私たちは結婚してる人もいる中で、子供たちいるの人もいる。私たちは人間、自分の国から逃げてきたの人たち、私たち。国で殺されないようにここに来たらここでは精神的暴行になって精神科に行って精神科の薬で頭おかしになって死にたい気持ちは出ますそこまで最低の入管ですもう私の映像は大体みんな見てる思います私はおがかないようにみんな私の暴行はしてるですヌフカンはそういうことは初めてじゃない私のずっとずっと違う人にもやってる私たちの痛みを上げて体ちょっと動いたらこの人は暴れたからそういうことをやって言われるの人たち嘘つすきその映画でトマサのスクットの映画で私たちの心ちゃんと伝えます思いますもう一つのことは言いたいですけれども、別のことですけれども、ごめんなさい、皆さんあの、いろんなボランティアたちの中でたった一人、二人あの、この映画のことに批判してる、それは私の批判はしてるは、私の言葉で邪魔してる。あのお願いします、私たちの助けたいのために、作ったのこの映画に邪魔しないで、批判しないで、誰も,もうボランティアとやるやるときに、ボランティアのことをやって、でも悪口は言わないで、話したいことあるだったら、トマさんはここにいる、話してください、Twitter とか Facebook とか、私、今日見たですけれども。何か書いてあるんですけれども、いいことじゃないです。私たちは今の時間では一緒にならないでダメです。バラバラしたら誰も私たちの助けない。今、ここでいるのメディアのおかげで私たちの声にみんな正解は聞いてる。私たちの映像は見てる。あなたたちのおかげでメディアさんのメディアで働いている人たちのおかげで、新聞社、新聞の買い取りの記者たちのおかげで、あのトーマンさんのおかげで、トーマルさんのおかげで、石川大河さんのおかげで、私たちの声はみんなは聞いてる今。それのは邪魔しないでほしい。ボランティアだったらボランティアのことしてです。あの関東の話のもうるさいで話ししないでほしいです。それは批判は邪魔です。邪魔しないでください。とても素晴らしい映画。私、今、ごめんなさい。ここでいるの、映画で出てる人たちに、本当に、アクションしてます。素晴らしい映画です。みんな見てください。ありがとうございます。Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Louis? Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming here today, and thank you also to give me the opportunity to share the, my sad, sad story, immigration story. I came to Japan in 2002 from Africa, and just after one week, I have applied for a refugee at the Immigration Bureau. But Uh, from 2002 to 2000, uh, 2021, I'm already、uh, 18 years in Japan. 
but I have spent seven years in, in detention, full time be detained at the Immigration Bureau. And in 2009, I have married a Japanese woman. And uh, the Immigration Bureau tried to, to break my marriage by saying to my wife that my marriage is a fake marriage. That after I will have a visa, I will go to divorce her. So then I, I was detained there for one and a half years. During that period, my wife like run away because of what immigration have told uh, told her. So when you, like I said, I have seven years. I've been seven years inside immigration, and what is very curious is that what happened inside immigration. There is nothing written in the in the media. The journalists are going there, the lawyers are going there, the volunteers are going there. But the reality of what is happening inside immigration is all hide from people. Like me, people that married Japanese women, there are many people there. I know that speaking about immigration is a big risk. Many people are afraid to speak of the topic of concern immigration. But I, I have to take that risk to speak out because I feel the pain for what they have done to me. So I have been living in the fear for a long time. The immigration as government, G7 country, they are openly break marriage, tell women to remove pregnancy. This I'm take, you can take the you can take the video, please. It's what they are doing there. Any Japanese woman that's going to visit a foreigner. Don't come here, don't come here, give, out, give, give that guy away. You, you're going to, you, are too, you are too young, it's not going to make you happy. Go and look for another, another, another husband. It's what, you, it's what they are doing. So those kind of people that break marriage, asking women to remove pregnancy, are they qualified to uh, go and ex investigate or examine uh, uh, any refugee status? They are not going to give any refugee status. If they can break legal marriage, if they can ask women to remove pregnancy, they are not qualified to, 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 to handle the matter of immigration. So, I, and this is since I, 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 my first detention was in 2004, this has been going on. You speak to the lawyer, it's like you are not saying anything. They are seeing their, their, their client losing their family. They don't take any action. The media is going there, you speak to them, it's like you, you are not saying anything. The embassy is going there, All, everybody is aware of what they are doing, but nobody is, is speaking out. Nobody is speaking out. I come to Japan, I lose most of my family in, in Africa. I come here as a refugee. I ask them, please support me. Instead of supporting me, the government is asking my woman to go and remove pregnancy. Four months, four months pregnant woman. You ask her to remove pregnancy that the husband is a fake marriage. I'm not lying. That is the truth, it's what they are, they are doing. They destroy the, your reason to be in Japan as if you are married, they tell your wife to run away, seize your property, then they can keep you in long term inside immigration because they will promise to the Japanese woman that we are not going to release him. You can divorce him, or take the property, run away. So when they promise to the woman that they are not going to release you, you're going to be there for long term. They do everything, everything possible to keep you there or kick you out of the country. So if you speak only about the refugee, there are refugees there, there are people that are married there, there are different kind of people there. And many people are afraid, like I saw somebody, somebody die in my blog, uh, uh, Deepak Kumar, the India guy commits suicide in my blog, uh, in, in my blog, and the Cameroonian guy that, that died in 2014. People don't want to testify, people are afraid. Even when the lawyer come to tell people come and testify, people are afraid to speak about immigration. People are dying, you don't take people to hospital. My, me, myself, I was there, I have vomiting blood for, 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 for more than one year and a half. I think you saw the picture. I'm not able to eat, I'll be vomiting blood when I vomit, they don't take me to hospital. No. They are doing this because they know that the system, the judge, every are supporting them. If you go to court, you, go, you are not going to win. The immigration are saying, the officer are saying, even if you go to court, you are not going to win. The immigration officers, they are, they are saying it. Even if you go to court, you, you cannot, it's the country.
So they, they have built a system, a system to break marriage, take stealing kids away from foreigners, and there is nothing we can do. I come as a refugee. I asked them. I just come seven years. Seven years uh, after seven days, I apply for refugee status. I, all the evidence I have, I give them. Instead of protecting me, they are taking my family away. And they don't want me to speak out. When I speak out, they detain me. They release me after three years. They just keep me one month outside without any reason. They, they take me back inside just because I write a statement. Then I send my statement to UN. And during my refugee, refugee interview, the inspector take my statement and say, what is, what, why do you write this? This is against you. Did you know that? It's against you. For me to tell the truth that Japanese government killed my child, telling my wife that my marriage is a fake marriage after I will have permanence, I will divorce her. It's not normal for the government to do that. Even a terrorist, they are not doing that. I, I didn't hear any terrorists doing that one, attacking baby in the stomach of the mother because of the nationality or the race of the father. All embassies know what I'm saying. Nobody will come and tell me that I'm lying. This is affecting all community. So after killing my child, taking my wife away, uh, and cause damage to my family back home, you don't want me to speak out. Why should I not speak out? Thank you. Just let me interrupt because we're going to uh, take questions and we want to leave time for questions. Is that OK? Sorry, uh, Lewis. Maybe um, uh, Ian, Thomas. You're going to sum up, are you? Um, thank you both. Thank you for, for sharing your testimonies. Um, I would like to share with you briefly about what's going to happen with the film next. The documentary is going to hold its world premiere in the 2021 Nippon Connection Japanese Film Festival in Frankfurt, Germany in June. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, this is the second year that the film festival will be held entirely online. While this may be disappointing for festival goers, it presents us with a unique opportunity to reach audiences across the world, including Japan. It is imperative that this documentary is seen by the Japanese audience. If it is not, there will be little chance for change. As it is a film festival, audiences will need to pay a fee to watch the films in the Nippon Connection program. In an effort to make the film as accessible as possible to as many people as possible, I have asked Nippon Connection to screen Ushiku in a free preview screening several days before the festival. The festival has graciously agreed. I would like to announce that one week from today, on May 27th, at 2100 in Japan, 1400 Central European summertime, and at 8 a.m. on the East Coast in the US, there will be a free online worldwide screening of Ushiku, followed by a Q&A. Thereafter, the documentary will participate in the Nippon Docs program of the Nippon Connection Japanese Film Festival from June 1st to June 6th. Information regarding the preview screening and the world premiere will be published on our documentary's website, ushikufilm.com, and communicated through our Twitter account, at ushikufilm. I'm going to be available for interviews after the press conference, so if you would like to ask questions during the Q&A, I would ask that they are focused and directed to Mr. Lewis and Mr. Dennis, who have so bravely joined us here today. This is about them. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to the two other speakers for coming. Uh, that must have been very difficult to do that. Um, so we have questions lined up uh, from online. Some people have already submitted questions. But before we take online questions, I'll uh, open up to the floor. Uh, working journalists first. Uh, followed by anybody else who wants to ask a question. Those are Richard, is it? Thank you. Uh, just tell us who you are when you come to the mic, if you don't mind. Thank you. My name is Richard Susilo. I'm from Indonesia. Uh, Tribune News, Compass newspaper. Uh, the uh, movie, the film, documentary movie, I think is good for us. But what I would like to ask you, you told us that I aware that I broke the, the role, the, uh, the rule. So you broke the uh, Japanese rule 
are you prepared for whatever the uh, if there is a punishment from the Japanese government to you? Thank you. Am I prepared for a punishment? I'm not sure how one would uh, how one would prepare for that, um, but yes, I accept. It, but this isn't about me. I had a choice. I I was a witness to what I believe to be violations of people's human rights, and I was compelled to collect evidence of that. Whatever happens to me, happens to me. But I am not the story. This story is about the people who are suffering in long-term immigration detention and who continue to suffer on provisional release. When they are on provisional release, their problems do not end. They do not have the right to work. They do not have health insurance. They do not have the freedom to move from one prefecture to another. Provisional release is simply a prison without walls. I would ask the media, don't make this story about me. It's about the people who are suffering. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman at the back of the room. Hi, I'm Thomas Hahn from Süddeutsche Zeitung. It's a German newspaper um, for Mr. Lewis and Mr. Dennis. Um, if it's OK for you and it's not too much intrusion in your privacy, could you give us a little bit more context on, on your story, where you come from, which countries you come from, um, why you had to fl flee, and uh, things like that? Only if this is not too much of an intrusion in your privacy. May I to say something first? Um, when you watch the film, you will see that we have been extremely careful to remove the family names of the people who are in the film and even to remove their nationality. We also have removed their reason for seeking refugee status. The reason why is because we, as the audience, we as people, do not do not know how to judge someone's claim for asylum. I did not want to give the audience the tools for them to think whether or not someone is a quote unquote true refugee or not. That is not the issue here. The issue is how we treat applicants for asylum. If someone's case is decided that they are not going to be recognized as an asylum seeker, they still have human rights. So having said that, we're all free people to speak. So if you would like to answer the question and share where you're from and share briefly about your claim for asylum, that is your choice. But as the person who made the film, I felt that we are not in a position to be able to make those judgments. Do you want あの、ドイツのよろしく。あの、ドイツから来たから多分私たちのことは知ってる思います。私はトルコのクルド人。日本でたった一人もクルド人の中でたった一人も難民申請認まらないゼロペンスパンセット。でもドイツの国アメリカニュージーランドいろんな国ではクルド人の難民は認まってパサポート英字権もらうことはありますそうじゃないですかですねあのだから私の難民はクルド人ですあの細かいことは トマさんの言ってるみたいで細かいことは 
、私、ここの新聞では言ってるんですけれども、今、映画の中では別の進む、だから、あのー、なんでここに来ては、ちょっと私の,あのトマさんの言ったのことと同じで言わないですでもそれだけは分かってほしいですね私はクルド人コテコテクルド人私の国でクルド人殺される今の政府私のクルド人の親戚とか自分とかは捕まってる中入れてる殺してるだからそれのためにクルド人だからここに来たもう一つのことは言いたいですけれどもニフカンあの本大臣ニフカンは言ってるのことは違反したら犯罪者を持って捕まりますだって。私たちは犯罪者はじゃないです。捕まることはおかしいです。もしはルールを守りたいだったら、国連のルールを一番守って、あと私たちのルールを守って言っては一番いいです。国連のルールは守らないように、私たちにルールを守って言っているの国のことはちょっとおかしい思います。国連から2回、アメリカから1回は、あの、中止させたんですけれども、やっぱりは変わらないかった。私たちは働きたい。ここ国では難民申請ですけれども、働きたい。保険はない。ドイツではそういうことありますか働きたいできない。県から別の県移動はできない。ありますかありがとうだからここはちょっとおかしいここのルール皆さんありがとうございますあなたにもありがとうございますドイツのよろしく Thank you Lewis do you want to say something?、Uh, yeah. Yeah, I come from Africa、uh, especially、uh, Cameroon uh, but I, I grew up I live Cameroon in my young age I don't even know the Cameroon I grew up in Central Africa Republic And、uh, I came to Japan in 2002 after the, my family was involved in the coup d'etat in Central Africa. So I、uh, lost most of most members of my family in 2000, 2001. When I left Central Africa, I went to a different country where、uh, also was difficult. The country was in war too. So I, have, I managed to escape to go back for one week to Central Africa and have a Japanese visa. And、I walked like 45, 45 days walking to, to reach the airport. Then I c o m e to Japan in 2001. I applied for a refugee. But since then, they did not give me any refugee. I submit all k i n d of evidence. They did not accept to give me a refugee. So that is my, my situation. Thank you very much. Thank you.、Um, we have a question. We have several questions online. I will read、uh, one of them now. This is from、uh, Itaru Matsui san、um, of the company DocuMeme.、Uh, the question is What kind of legal reforms do you think are necessary for the new Khan in the future? What kind of、uh, reforms do you think are necessary for the immigration、uh, system in the future? I'll read from you our impact vision statement. It is that. It is to have an immigration system where all refugees are recognized in a just, timely, and transparent process. You know, I, I appreciate the question what, what are we supposed to do? What should happen? You know, we don't necessarily know how to fix the problem. And the first step is to become aware of the problem. And there are many people. In the Japanese public, that are not,、uh, not aware of this problem. And so the first step is to bring awareness, to show people what is happening, and to inspire them to think about this question, which is what do we as citizens want for our country? How are we complicit in the policies of our government? 
in many ways, this is not our fight. This is not our fight to fight. We are just the vessels. We will not bear the burden of those who come against us, those who threaten us, those who fall victim to the fear. And we are going to remain resolute in our mission, which is to share the truth. Thank you. Do the other two speakers have any comments on that question? So how should the uh, immigration system be reformed? すみません。法律とはどういうことでは変わっていいですか。今の法律は、あの、とても最低の気持ち悪いの法律です。やっぱり、私たち一番は働きたい。別の国では働いてダメのルールはないですけれども、日本ではそれあります。働いて自分のお金で自分の奥さんに誕生日のプレゼントはしてあげたい今は私は働いてない私の面倒は奥さんは見てるですだからごめんなさいですけども私のお金ももう何でも奥さんは助けてあげる人間の中で一番恥ず
Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thomas, can I ask you a question? Have you had any uh, attention from the authorities since you uh, began talking about this issue? Um, I have not. Um, I fully expected that I would get at least a phone call from someone from immigration. Um, I did not think that the biggest f force against it would be from a supporter. Um, and I find that really unfortunate because as, as Dennis said, we need to be putting our energy and our efforts together. Please don't waste your energy and your time trying to make people be quiet. Let's, you know, you don't have to like what I did. You can actually not like what I did, that's okay. But please use your time and your, these people, are so amazing, these supporters. They have done so many amazing things to get out information, to help people, to do translations for refugee applications, to get lawyers. This group is brilliant. They are absolutely amazing. And they, I, I, would, I, I pray for them that they will use their time and their energy and their talent to help the people that are being affected. Please, I implore you, if, 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 if it is caused that there becomes a, 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 a fractioning of our groups, then immigration is going to win. Don't let them win. We are not the enemy. Telling the truth is not the enemy. Let us bring our gifts of time and energy together to help the people that are being so desperately um, affected. Thank you. Uh, just a second, P.O., is that okay? Because this question, online question, is directly relevant. So I'll just read out the question, which is, comes from Ichiro Sato, where, who says he is one of uh, Mr. Pina's supporters, yeah? Okay, can... Uh, is that all right? Wait one moment. Can I just see it real quick? Can you not read his full name? We discussed it before the press conference. Okay, uh, we cannot read his full name. Oh, his full name, I see. The, the, the person it refers to, right? Yes. Okay, I see. Okay. Uh, so I, I, will, I will read out the email, but not mention the name of the person it refers to. Uh, Mr. Ash uh, has made a documentary about the name of the person, but the person has not given you permission to do so. The Japanese Immigration Bureau will take revenge on him. Uh, this person might even die because of it. Why did you trample on his human rights and on his life? Is the question. It's obviously a hostile question, but it's good to deal with it, Jeff. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. No, I just, um, just to clarify, um, I, I asked David to please not read the full name of this person because this supporter who is concerned, rightfully so, about his safety has written publicly a question that was about to be read over a live broadcast, the full name of this person. That to me is a, is, a, is a problem. As I told you, we have taken care to try to, as much as possible, protect some of the personal information of the people that we documented. Um, I have already addressed this issue in my comments. I can tell you that all nine people that appear in the film have given their permission on multiple times. Um, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm saddened that it appears that um, that, that the supporters of this person um, and, and even this person himself appear to feel, di feel differently about his appearance in the film. Um, I can tell you that up until the day before I, I uh, released the trailer, I communicated with all of the people. They all knew that it was going to happen. At no point in, in any recent period um, were there any issues um, regarding the release of it. Uh, and in fact, two days after the trailer was released, I also had a conversation with the individual concerned and they were um, completely fine. Um, of course, people are scared. Of course, it is a risk. But this person told me in no uncertain terms that they supported the documentary and they wanted to raise their voice. Um, if that is no longer the case, then I then I am I'm deeply saddened by that. But I, I can tell you that that, that, is, that simply was not the case. Um, 
what, what do you think the questioner means by um, asking if this, he says this person might die because of this movie. I mean, I don't get what that means. Why uh, would the person die? Well, we would need to, I, I wish that we were here in person and we could. あの、あの、I just can I say one thing? Um I I our job as supporters is to support the people that we are trying to help. This this person involved is in a very fragile state and is very susceptible to many many different forces. And so our job is to protect and to support the people in the film and and people have a right to, for their feelings to develop and change and so we need to support all of the people in the film including this person he is our brother and we we love him and we support him fully all right sorry to i'm just going to move things along because we only have four minutes left and uh, po i believe has a question is that right po yes those all Hi, uh, Pio de Miglia from Italy. Um, <clears throat> I didn't see the movie yet, but I'm going to do it very soon, hopefully. Congratulations anyway, even without seeing it. <laughs> uh, I have two questions. The first one is, uh, I'm sure you are aware that right in these days, the Japanese government, the Japanese mm, yeah, mm, Liberal Party um, announced the officially that they are going to give up uh, to this uh, uh, um, new legislation on immigration. Uh, do you think that this uh, will uh, have uh, some impact in, uh, in the rules and the way of management of immigration? Clearly, in my opinion, I've been following this for many years, it means that the Japanese government is not so much, uh, uh, you know, uh, strong in, in believing in this uh, thing anymore. So they may give in in something. So are you positive? Are you optimistic in this? And then uh, secondly is, uh, can you ex exactly tell me, uh, I'm asking about those that have been inside, uh, how exactly does it function, the visiting uh, system? Because sometimes I have been trying to visit uh, people as a friend, and they told me that it's not possible to visit as friends. But some other people told me that yes, as friends, is it possible? How does it work exactly? Of course, not being a, a journalist, not saying that you are a journalist, of course. So just two questions. One, has the so the LDP's decision or the government's decision to abandon reforms will that have an impact on uh, immigration rules? And how does the visiting system work uh, uh, if you're not a family member? I, I think it's uh, you know. It's, it's hard to, to say what's going to happen moving forward with legislation. I think we're at a very peak time um, with the unfortunate death of Wishma, still very much in the news, um, and with, with the, all these other deaths um, that have happened over the past 20 years. We have the Olympics coming up. The world's eyes are on Japan. Um, some of our supporters were so thrilled when these reforms were withdrawn um, but I think we need to be very careful uh, about how much we celebrate because those reforms were going to make a really bad situation even worse. So yes, the government briefly gave up on making the situation worse, but things are still very, very bad. And the rule on visiting? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, in fact, it's difficult for the I mean, more There's more process for uh, journalists to visit, but family members or friends can, can visit freely. What it requires is, is you to know the person's full name and their nationality, but anyone, anyone, anyone can go and, and can visit. So I'm not, sure what, I'm not sure what happened. I'll vouch for that. I've been to prisons and I've visited yeah. people, yeah. Using my own name, 
Yep. As long as they want, well, as long as they want to see you, right? As yeah. long as you've, and then the other issue might be that the authorities might not want you to see them for whatever reason. But I, I've never but experienced that's, it. That's possible. They can refuse. It, yes, I mean, if it's not up to them. They can refuse a visit too if they don't. Yeah. yeah. They can and they should. But I'm saying, is, can the authorities just refuse because they don't want? To? That's that's about. Of course, they can refuse. But mm. Right, so just to clarify, Pio is asking, can the authorities unilaterally decide that a visitor cannot meet an inmate? A detainee. Well, they can, I mean, do you want to answer the question? Hmm. はい、すみません。ありがとうございます。あの私たちの名前と名字分かる人たちは誰でも面会には私は何回何回会ったことで私の面会来てのボランティアはあ、デニズあなたたちで話してほしくない言われたことは聞いてましたあの、私は私の面会はディニズは出てほしくないの話は何回何回はあった私これはそこのいるの担当のあの決めることあの例えばいっぱい人いっぱい人来たですけどもできないかと言ってるですけども嘘ですそれだったらあの三十分の面会は二十分十五